Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And so we are at, have entered into our Lenten journey together, uh, having been marked with ashes on Ash Wednesday, and now we are here as Christians, as Catholics, and we bring our lives to God. Let us begin. Let's first acknowledge our sins so that we can enter into these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God. On us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Thank you. 
Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus, death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one, the many die, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? And the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned, for after one sin, there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift, after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if, by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord.
So one of the things that we do know about the evil one is that he's clever. He's clever. Um, he's come down through the centuries as a snake, and we still use that expression when someone is trying to lure us to go against what is right and call him a snake, right? That snake. You know, I had a coworker that would say it all the time. That's a snake. That's a snake. You know, the difference between Adam and Eve and Jesus, though, was that Adam and Eve caved into the clever temptation where Jesus resisted it. Um, so Jesus shows us that we can outsmart the clever one when our heart is in the right place. What we know about temptation is that it tries to convince us to go for what appears to be good for us. Even Eve noticed that the fruit of the tree was desirable as food, and it was attractive. But the real selling point for her was that it could lead to gaining the kind of wisdom that, that God had. And so who wouldn't want to know everything there is to know? That was the temptation. In the desert, the devil went for cleverness again. You know, after 40 days, Jesus, of course, is very hungry. And so he attempts him to use his power to turn the stones into bread. You know, why not? It would satisfy his hunger. Or if Jesus wanted people to turn to God and see that, see the greatest sign of his divinity that there ever was, you know, why not fly off the top of the tall temple building to let the angels help him fly like Superman? Because then, that would turn people's heads, wouldn't it? Um, in an instant, no more obscurity. Everybody would know about him instantly. Or, if Jesus was on earth for this great mission, you know, why not accomplish it all at once with unlimited power? Uh, he would have the ultimate accept, success that the world would turn to him. And this new world that he wants to usher in could begin without even our, our uh, interest to be a part of it. He could do it by himself, and everything would fall into place. What we see that in the end is that Adam and Eve couldn't resist the desire to be like God's. Jesus, though, didn't have to be lured, in, lured into something in which he already was. That's why Paul calls him the new Adam. You know, the first Adam fell for the lie, and that leads to death. But the new Adam resisted any attempt to compete with God. It was a choice toward life, and what the being with God really is, which leads us to fulfillment and happiness and wholeness. We don't have to compete with God. That's his biggest thing for us. We simply trust in what we know, that following God's wisdom, God's way works. And that's how we outsmart the clever one. All of us have this ability. Um, we don't fall for the empty promises because if we leave it up to ourselves, we will never have enough pleasure, we will never have enough power, we will never have enough pride in ourselves, we'll always be seeking to fulfill something that we don't have. And I know I learned that the hard way in my, in my own life. But if we follow Jesus, we don't have to focus on what we're missing. We can focus on what we already have. And that gives us a different kind of power. This week I saw an interesting ad about a new diet pill that's being marketed for women. And with this new product, you don't have to exercise, you don't have to diet in a specific way, you just have to take one gummy bear a day, and it has a secret ingredient that will dissolve fat within the stomach while you sleep. So in a week, you can lose 50 pounds or more with no side effects, and that's a big capital letters, no side effects whatsoever. You know, on a culture that focuses on appearances, this is a great promise. There is no doubt, and it has instant results. One week, you can, you can have, have lose 50 pounds. <laughs> but, even if this ends up to be a game changer, does it really, in the end, satisfy what we really need? Which, deep down, as we know, is a desire to be loved. We don't need a special pill to help us find love in our life, for someone to be attracted enough to us to love us. The empty promise is empty. If we want to be loved, value the person that God created you to be. Attractiveness comes from self-worth. And so when we value who we are and what we have, which are our qualities, our own ability to love, the good things that we can contribute to this world, that we don't have to change what's fundamentally good about us. We don't have to compete with each other to be valued, as if there's something to win or if there's someone for us to love us. What God wants us to see is that God values us when we are authentically ourselves. 
Jesus saw that within himself, and that's how he outsmarted the clever one. And the angels came to his side, not to help him fly like Superman, but to minister to him, showing him that God was with him. He valued who he was, and not an empty promise of who he could be. The devil also was clever in the way that he used God's word to try to make a case for the empty promises. But he made a big mistake. Um, his quotes to Jesus were out of context, while Jesus' quotes were in the right context. And it just goes to show us, when someone quotes God to us, it's okay to be leery of what they're, what they're quoting, um, because uh, we can outsmart the clever ones. You know, look into the context of, of what they're quoting before you go buying into it. Right? In the right context, God's words are life-giving, not life-taking. So as we begin this time of Lent, we can open our eyes, we open our minds, we open our hearts to being aware so that we can unmask temptation for what it is, temptation. To do this, Jesus gives us three things to hold on to. First, if the promise sounds too good to be true, it probably is, right? And an empty promise is, is just that, it's, it's empty. Second, when someone quotes God's words to us, find the right context in which it needs to be given. You know, the clever people can make a good case for just about anything. You know, that's what, what makes them clever. And the third thing, we have more power than we may think. Um, we don't have to seek to be loved. Uh, we are already loved for who we are. So God has built you into existence. Uh, your life matters. Um, so be yourself. We are so loved by God that when we do fall into temptation and we go to Him with this desire to be forgiven and to begin again, He gives us the opportunity. That's the difference between Adam and Jesus. We don't have to take something we can just simply ask for. Forgiveness. So trust what God promises because it's not empty. It's full. It just goes to show us, you know, following Jesus' lead, we can outsmart the cleverness of temptation. It happens when our hearts are in the right place.
poverty, injustice, conflicts, and wars in this world be ended through compassion and human hearts. We pray. Lord, that the elect and candidates who are seeking God's will in their lives find his love, peace, and strength within the Catholic faith. We pray. Lord, For those struggling with illness, injury, or addictions, those awaiting test results or in recovery, may they be comforted, healed, and strengthened, including Joe Tacori, Kathy Cush, Francine DeGoy, Joanne Anderson, Father George Payne, Guy Ranallo, Bonnie Hindenburg, Debbie Barker, Francine DeGoy, John Contessa, and Ed Frank, we pray. Lord, For those who have died, may they be given the God's generous gift of eternal life, including those who have lost their lives to mass shootings, violence, and natural disasters. And for Mary Catherine Ginneman, Joseph King, Cleta Rudin, and for Joe and Napoleon, Father Rizzo's brother-in-law, we pray. Lord, for your needs, for the prayers in our book of intentions, and for those for whom we are offering this Mass, Yudika and Nicola Radman, Eleanor Funk, Jeffrey Rupert, we pray. Lord God, through the obedience of your beloved Son, we have the gift of salvation. In his name, we ask you to answer our prayers, that we live more faithfully, love you more deeply, and glorify you with our whole being. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen.
hope to God, the Almighty Father. Please give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them, we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, the Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over to, at last, to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Hubert, and with all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter my room. Holy Spirit, Lord, my soul shall be in you.
Let us pray. Thank <laughs> you.